big news from a top five player that could make or break a recruiting class. Let's get to it here on Locked On Wildcats. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, we got a lot to get to today. Action packed show. We're going to talk some basketball. We're going to talk some football. As always, we're going to talk a little bit of recruiting. So I'll tell you what, why don't we just get right down to it? All right. Now, uh, we've talked a ton about Tommy Lloyd and what recruiting expectations are and how exactly we see this 2023 and 2024 class shaping out. So, Let's get that. Let's get back to where everything is, uh, where everything is right now. First, you've got a player. You've got two commitments in the 2023 basketball class. Both are big time players. One is Kylan Boswell, point guard, top 20 kid, originally out of California, goes to Compass Prep right now. Um, Multi-year player. Excellent, excellent, excellent kid. Then you got KJ Lewis, another player who very talented, um, a two actually lived here in Tucson a little bit. If you watch his highlights, it always cracks me up though, to think of that this guy could have been playing against like Rincon high school or like Sabino or something. So I would imagine that he's going to finish around a top 40 player. He's just transferred to Duncanville, which is big because Duncanville basketball is a lot better than El Paso basketball. And I think it'll give him an opportunity to be able to shine there. Now, there's pro- this is probably going to be a four-man class. There's the possibility that it could be a five-man class. Who knows? You know, the Tommy Gun has things on a uh, – he knows more about his program than I do. I am just conjecturing from the outside. But the two – there's two main targets right now, and these are big-time targets right there. You've got Kwame Evans Jr., top five big man out of Florida, who we'll get to in just a minute. But then you've also got – Cody Williams out of Phoenix. So let's talk a little bit about where Arizona stands, what both of these guys can bring to the equation. Kwame Evans Jr. is a different animal than everybody else in the class. He is the epitome of a one and done. He's a little bit raw, but as we've seen with NBA sorts, they don't care if you're raw. They care about your overall potential and what you can provide for that team, for that program. And the fact that Evans reached out to Arizona, not vice versa, Evans reached out to Arizona and said he'd like to be recruited by them, shows a big, big, well, well let's be honest here, get our, uh, sign that you're really interested. Because again, Kwame, a guy like Kwame Evans Jr. can go to Duke, he can go to Kentucky, he can go anywhere he wants. So, you know. If you're Arizona, you certainly pick up that phone call. The first thing, too, that I think you're interested in, if you're Miller, or excuse me, if you're Miller, if you're Tommy Lloyd is, what kind of fit he is. We've talked about this time and time and time again. Continuity, continuity, continuity. Tommy Lloyd is not going to fall into the rut that some other coaches have where you try to get just a highly ranked guy and try to make it fit. Arizona fell into that during the latter years of the Miller era where you were bringing in Raleigh Alkins and Kobe Simmons, guys who were top five, uh, excuse me, you guys, five-star prospects, but not top five or not five-star type fits. That's where Arizona was with those guys. There's no, obviously there's no secret about that. And Sean Miller, I think would probably in hindsight tell you, we got away from it a little bit. You look at the five-star kids that he recruited early on when Arizona was really good, there was a certain toughness to them, whether it was a low five-star or a high five-star. And Aaron Gordon could play five different – or five – could guard four different positions. A guy like uh, uh, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, same thing. A player like Nick Johnson, same thing. They all bought in, and they bought in on the parts that aren't always sexy out there, the – just the basketball parts, to be honest with you. So that's what you're looking at right now when you're looking at uh, uh, Arizona and Kwame Evans. He's right now at the top 100 camp. Uh, Eric Bossy from 24-7 said that he has been playing incredibly well in front of Tommy Lloyd, which is always a good thing because 
coaches want players to play well in front of them. It just makes their job easier. But let's honest, be honest here. Kwame Evans could go out there and play like me against these guys right now in Arizona and everybody else would still be all over him. He's that type of player. All right. Now, the other one, Cody Williams. What's the latest with him? He's a guy that's going to continue to go up the uh, recruiting uh, rankings. Um, I was talking with a 24-7 national guy who's a big fan of Cody Williams, and he likes everything about him. He's he, he can He can basically do a little bit of everything. Pretty good handle, not a great handle, not a point guard. We need to be very clear about that. He's not a point guard, but who cares? It doesn't really matter because he's able to – be about a two, but when you're six foot six or six foot seven, that's fine. And so besides having a pretty good handle, he's got a pretty good understanding of the game, the whip around passes that he's able to get into the lane and get into and throw out with his left hand. That's some next level stuff right there. You don't see that all the time. As a matter of fact, you rarely see that. And you factor in two, he's a good kid from a good background. And if you're Arizona, you would like to have him. I'm glad Arizona offered him. Uh, Lloyd does things a little bit differently. He basically said, you know, uh, with kids like we don't offer many kids. So if we do offer a kid, it's because we feel really good about their potential fit there. And he feels obviously very comfortable with the fit that Cody Williams can provide at Arizona. This recruitment is probably going to take a while. Arizona's hopped in there a little bit late, but the national folks have all hopped in there a little late as well. So that's certainly something that you need to keep in mind right now. But we will definitely keep you up to date on everything you need to know with Cody Williams, in-state kid. Obviously, very happy for what he can provide. All right. Now, in a minute, we're going to get to some of the how Arizona stacks up in the conference. But I'll just put it to you like this. 2023-2024 is going to be a big-time year, big-time recruiting class for excuse me, 2022, 2023 is going to be a big time recruiting class for Arizona basketball. You're going to have multiple McDonald's all Americans and the ones that aren't are going to be forced high four star kids who are all going to be good fits. So fear not Tommy Lloyd has this one and he's got this one on lock. All right. Now I wanted to go around the conference here a little bit. And now that we know who is back where everybody stands for with Arizona. We're going to get to that in just a minute, but first, let's talk about let's talk about Bet Online. All right. Uh Bet Online Sportsbook is absolutely where it's at. It's been around for a long time. It's easy to navigate. I can't stress that to you enough. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed by the betting sites and all oh, I don't know where to go. Do I what button do I click? It's very easy. It's delineated perfectly for you. Wherever, if you want to go to props, if you want to go to odds, if you want to go to where at futures, it's got it all point out there that you need. So check it out again, the Bet Online Sportsbook app. Right now, it's a good time to get on there because keep in mind, uh, obviously, football and basketball aren't here, but it always sneaks up on people. It always is back sooner than you would ever imagine. That's going to be the way that it's probably going to be here. So get on the Bet Online Sportsbook app, get everything, uh, get get everything figured out, and you can be ready to rock and roll right now. And for football, we'll be right back with you. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right. So now that we now that the NBA draft has occurred, now that the transfer portal has come and gone. I mean, there's still some guys out there, but generally everybody knows who's going to be where. Let's talk about how Arizona fits in. So Arizona right now is considered the slight favorite to win the uh, conference championship next year in basketball. I will admit I was a little bit surprised by that. I figured that when UCLA got back Jaime Hawkes, obviously Tiger Campbell coming back, that that was going to be a big boon for the Bruins. It is a big boon for the Bruins, obviously, but a little bit different though, because you don't have any big men. And I, uh, uh, I was actually informed about this by a Michael Defoe on Twitter, who basically said, you know, what am I missing here? Where are the big men? And you've got one, you've got a uh, Adama Bona and that's it. You need our Adam Bona. That's it. You, you're going to have one six foot nine guy that can play. And that's, 
you're going to have to roll with a bunch of six foot seven guys masquerading as big men right there. That's generally a difficult road to hoe. So, but let's look at where UCLA matches up with Arizona. At the point guard position, you got Tiger Campbell, you got Kurt Creesa. Um, Campbell's not a world beater, but he's solid. I think he's a little bit better basketball player than Kurt Creesa. Then at the two guard position, you're going to have Courtney Ramey, who is two years or a year removed from being third team all Big 12. And you're going to have Amari Bailey at that small forward position, for, or excuse me, at that point guard or shooting guard position for UCLA. Now, for all those of you who don't know who Amari Bailey is, he's a top 15 kid out of California, been highly rated his entire time, generally viewed as a one and done, big time prospect, next level type guy. Um, he will uh he's probably more talented than Ramey, but I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a Courtney Ramey who is a senior or yeah, who is a fifth year senior over the freshman right now, just as far as impact at the college level. Because let's be honest, that's all we care about is the impact at the college level, nothing else. So I think Arizona has the slight edge right there in the so basically I think the backcourts are about even at small forward. You're gonna have Pella Larson. And you're going to have probably David Singleton says with a question mark. Um, David Singleton, really good shooter, doesn't do much else. Pella Larson's a little bit better basketball player than um, uh, uh, David Singleton. So Arizona slight edge there. Um, I don't know that he's ever going to be a world, beat, world beater, Pella Larson, but again, Good basketball player, probably a little bit of an advantage there. At power forward, Azulis Tabellis, uh, Jaime Jaquez. There's not many times when I'm going to give Jaime Jaquez the or uh, Azulis Tabellis a disadvantage in conference at the power forward spot. I'm going to give him the disadvantage against Jaime Jaquez. Um, Tabellis is obviously very good. Jaquez, I think, is a little bit just kind of a next level player. My main concern with Tabellis coming back from the Pac 12 tournament is what is he going to look like? What's he going to look like physically and or mentally, excuse me, because mentally he was pushed around and he shrunk in the uh, NCAA tournament. Arizona needed him to be a beast. And not only was he not a beast, he couldn't even be played. And that was a major, major problem for Arizona. Hawkes is never going to be the guy that's going to be benched in the second half of a NCAA tournament game, let alone multiple. He's a, you know, he's a dog. He's got a little bit, got a little bit of Luke Walton in him, in that he can spin, he can get to his spot, he can pump fake, he can up fake, he can shoot. There's some, there's a lot to like about Jaime Hawkes. I think he's probably the best returning player in the conference, and if he's not, he's really close to it. So, um, and then at the power forward position, you got the five star big man Bona probably going against Ballo. Um, you could easily see that being a a wash. I would rather have Ballo, but off the bench though, I think is where you're an issue for UCLA. Cause you've got a bunch of Jalen Clarks. You don't really have any other big man. Whereas Arizona can bring a VSAR off the bench that honestly UCLA just doesn't have. So that's certainly something to keep an eye on. I would give a tiny, tiny favorite to UCLA, but I don't feel great about it though. I'm actually, I'm, I'm ecstatic that Arizona is, uh, viewed as the preseason number one, mainly because that also shows you that Vegas really likes Tommy Boyd. All right. There's two other teams. Well, there's really only, I think, one other team that matters for Arizona's perspective, but we are in depth. We are detailed here at the uh, our Locked On Wildcats, so we're going to talk about it. Both of them. Oregon. Oregon was incredibly disappointing last year. They had a lot of talent, but the pieces never came together. And it never, every time it felt like it, Oregon was about to get it together, whether they, because they beat UCLA twice, they come in and they almost beat Arizona in McHale. But then you lose to Stanford, you lose to ASU. So you kind of wonder what exactly is going on there. And I think the pieces, the pieces maybe fit, but nobody knew what their role was. I think what Altman's plan going into this year is everybody is going to have a defined role. You're going to have Bartholomew running the point, the Colorado transfer, get the ball up the court, get it to somebody else that, uh, you know, that can initiate the offense. Then you're going to have Will Richardson running the shooting guard spot. Will Richardson should always be the shooting guard. And I think that putting him in that full-time attack position right there is going to do wonders for him and for Oregon. If I'm Dana Altman, I'm telling him, I need you to average 17 or 18 points per game this year, and I need you to be in contention for the conference player of the year. 
That's my expectations for you. And it'll be fun to see if he can actually do that or not. Uh, Quincy Garrier came to Eric or came to Oregon as a power forward and they tried, and I think they're going to try to transition him to a small forward on the uh, field that, all right, we just need you to shoot. We just need you to launch threes. We're going to allow you to launch threes. He made high thirties in conference play. Once Arizona, once he gets to uh, uh, this year, I would imagine if you're going to give him five or six threes per game, you're going to want him to be able to sh- make about 38% of those. So there's that. That's where you're, everybody has more of a role there. Down low, it's going to be the two big men. It's going to be Kel L. Ware, top five big man coming into the, probably going to be the best NBA prospect in the conference and in Folly Dante. This is probably the only front line in the conference. It's better than Arizona's. And if it's not better than Arizona's, it's right there. These two guys are both very talented. Ware is a no-duh top 10 pick. Dante has a world of talent. He's just never been able to reach it, mainly because nobody quite knows, to be honest with you. And but you've seen the talent. Some games he'll go, he'll get four points and three rebounds. Then other games, like last year against Christian Coloco, he'll get you 15 and 15. So you know the talent's there. It's just about what you can really do with it. So I think Arizona and Oregon are a very interesting matchup. And I think they're both about even, even though obviously the odds favor Arizona. All right, there's one other wild card team that we need to break down. And we're going to talk about that coming up next. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right. So we talked about Arizona being the slight favor to win the Pac-12. We've talked a little bit of recruiting, but now let's talk about where Arizona matches up with the one other team that's viewed as having a chance here, and that's USC. USC basketball and Andy Enfield gets beat up a lot, and I don't quite know why, mainly because if I'm a USC fan, I'm ecstatic that Andy Enfield's there. Andy Enfield at USC is the epit- or is the equivalent of an Arizona football coach coming in and offer a giving nine win or basically being a nine win or an eight nine win coach. Sure, you're probably never going to win a national title, but you know what? You're always going to be competitive. You're always going to be in that national setting, and that's something that you're more than okay with if you're US- or your USC. He can also recruit. He always has a bunch of long, big men that are probably going to play in the NBA. You got mo- both the Mobley brothers, obviously. You got Nyeka Kongwu. You've got Chimizi Metu. He's put a lot of guys in the league. This year is no different. You got Big Vince coming in, top five or a top 25 big man out of California. And you got some returning players that can play. Let's talk first about, uh, uh, excuse me, um, Drew Peterson. If there is a player that could be in that discussion for the conference player of the year, along with, say, Jaime Hawkes, Will Richardson, and Julius Tabellis, it's Peterson. Peterson was great last year. He had an, he had numbers and games where he put up 15 points, nine rebounds, seven blocks, four assists. There's not a lot of guys in college basketball that can accumulate those type of numbers. And that's what he was able to do. He tested the waters. He came back. He should be the bell cow for USC next year. Also lined up there with uh, Boogie Ellis returning at that point guard spot, 12 and four, something not great, but a solid player. And then you got Reese Waters Dixon, who I like, I like a lot. I could see him averaging nine or 10 a game at the shooting guard spot. Then you got some other guys who are going to be waiting, obviously on, uh, Kajani Wright, top 50 power forward coming in. Can he play? And then you've also got a Derek White, a top 50 wing. So talent won't be uh, won't be an issue for uh, USC next year, but it's always going to be, can Andy Enfield coach them up? Can he get them to the level that they should be? Generally, that's no, but at the end of the day, he's probably going to give them a top. He's probably going to have them around a seven or an eight seed, third or fourth in the conference. And again, if you're USC basketball, you are more than okay with that. Think the U of A football equivalent right there. Okay. So that's kind of how Arizona stacks up. I wanted to give her a little bit of a recruiting reset. We will be back with you on Monday. John Schuster will be back with me as well. We're going to talk a bunch more of Arizona athletics, but also, again, I want to tell you that the fact that Arizona is preseason pick or right now is the slight betting favorite to win the conference really shows you how much faith that Vegas has in Tommy Lloyd because 
most times you lose a Dalen Terry, a Benedict Matherin, a Christian Coloco, you're not going to find yourself in that realm. And he certainly found himself right there. So again, kudos to Tommy Lloyd for restoring this program. We will be back with you Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. And thanks so much for listening to the Lock.